Hello friends, thanks so much for tuning in to another informative weekend edition of Jamaica Magazine. I'm your host Adrian Atkinson. In today's show, we're looking forward to Labor Day 2021 and exploring strategies to improve productivity. We also have tips for those of you who are getting into farming as a business. Sit back and relax with these and more interesting features right after this important message. <music> It's absolutely critical that we receive the vaccines. You will see hospitalizations and indeed deaths likely come down. And so there is a lot of value to be gained by getting as many vulnerables on board as possible. So tell your mothers, tell your aunts, listen out for yourselves if you're over 60 and take the vax because the vax is what will help you to guard against the COVID virus and indeed help your relatives, your friends, those who you come in contact with for the same benefit. Labor Day 2021 is just around the corner and this year we all are being asked to celebrate the day at home. On Monday, remember to stay home, stay safe, and clean up your space while you're at it. How about some backyard gardening? Here's why you should adhere to the 2021 Labor Day plans. Every year, Labor Day offers an opportunity for Jamaicans to harness the spirit of volunteerism and work to improve the island's physical environment. While that has been both a public and private endeavor in the past, this year, it changes. For Labor Day 2021, the streets will be empty and public places unoccupied. Instead, Jamaicans across the island are called to abide by the COVID restrictions under the Disaster Risk Management Act and Labor at Home. The Prime Minister has already announced that the curfew which commences at 2 p.m. on Sunday, May 23, will continue until Tuesday, May 25, as there will be an all-day lockdown on Labor Day, Monday, May 24. This means that in keeping with the theme, the public will be asked to stay home and clean up your space. Come May 24, there will be no National Labor Day project. Jamaicans have two tasks at hand instead. One, they must rid their homes and surroundings of conditions or elements that encourage mosquito breeding, and two, start or restart a backyard garden. In keeping with that objective, I've reached out to the Minister of Agriculture and Fisheries and the Minister of Housing, Urban Renewal, Environment and Climate Change to provide support for our citizens for their Labor Day projects and to raise public awareness about their initiatives. The Agriculture Ministry, through RADA, recently renewed its backyard garden program. Through it, persons can get access to vegetable and herb seedlings, fertilizer, and other gardening resources to plant up their outdoor spaces. <music> Labor Day is, of course, the culmination of Workers' Week. As customary, the invaluable contribution of the Workers of Jamaica will be recognized during this period. This year, Workers Week will be celebrated from Sunday, May 16 to Monday, May 24. Labor Day is being observed on the Monday and keeping with the provisions of the Holidays Act since May 23rd falls on a Sunday. So the theme for Workers Week and National Labor Day is promoting a clean and healthy environment. And the slogan for National Labor Day 2021 is Stay home, stay safe. This Labor Day, clean up your space. On Sunday, May 23, there will be a virtual National Labor Day and Workers' Week church service hosted by the Mandeville Church of God as well as national observance in churches across the island virtually. The week will culminate on Monday, May 24, with a floral tribute in which wreaths will be laid at the monument of the Right Excellent Sam Sharp, both at the National Heroes Park and in Sam Sharp Square. 
While those are underway, it is hoped that Jamaicans will take time to labor at home, getting rid of mosquito breeding conditions and planting food or ornamental plants in their outdoor spaces. I remind all Jamaicans that this Labor Day, stay home, stay safe and clean up your space. For those of us who do not believe that COVID is real and that it is here, have you been to one of those hospitals where the wards are overflowing with patients who are trying to breathe and talk at the same time but find it so impossible to do so? Or have you seen someone die in front of you trying to make the next breath to stay alive? So my fellow Jamaicans and colleagues, whether you believe it or not, COVID is real. So I implore you, social distance. Wash your hands, wear your mask, sanitize. Along with that, we need to keep our immune system nice and healthy. So you drink lots of water, eat your fruits and vegetables. But whether we believe it or not, COVID is here. It is here to stay. It's going to be the new norm. And remember, when you behave irresponsible, you expose all of us. So do the responsible thing. As we mark Workers' Week, let's turn our focus to the topic of productivity improvement, which is important to wealth creation. The Ministry of Labor and Social Security through the Jamaica Productivity Center has been building awareness around the strategies for achieving improved productivity. Learn more in this next feature. The Ministry of Labor and Social Security through the Jamaica Productivity Center, JPC, has been developing and implementing programs as well as conducting workshops to assist individuals, companies and firms optimize their efficiency and drive productivity improvement in Jamaica. The JPC recently hosted a virtual session that brought accomplished individuals and high achievers in one setting to share needed information on how productivity can be achieved and its impact on society. Productivity in simple terms is how efficient an input is converted to output. When this happens, economic growth and the country's development is fueled because of the increased goods and services produced with greater efficiency. Businesses will realize higher profit as they produce more outputs from lower input due to the systems they implement. Their competitiveness will improve and they will be able to better compensate employees. Citizens will realize improvements in their standard of living and will be able to exercise higher levels of consumption of goods and services even with reduced working hours. Higher economic growth measured by increased gross domestic product GDP output resulting from an increase in productivity will also benefit the country. How? Through the generation of larger tax revenue for government. This allows for greater investments in infrastructure and services, including education, healthcare, welfare, transportation, roads, water, and more. Gross domestic product GDP is the sum of labor productivity, capital intensity growth, and total factor productivity. Therefore, increases in all three areas equate to us having a booming economy. JPC has found that there are several factors that hamper productivity that need to be treated with urgency. They include bureaucracy, low-value-added production, crime, traffic congestion, lack of suitable technology and capital investment, as well as job and skill mismatch and limiting international trade flows. As it relates to labor productivity, the JPC recommends that companies and firms, public or private, small or large, research what is happening in their industry and make innovative changes on a consistent basis. Where enterprises are shifting from being more labor-intensive to technology, such as artificial intelligence, they must seek to create the right balance between human effort and technology to optimize productivity. Integrating the right technology and a smart business process that is measurable, result-based and time-based is now an essential part of the solution for firms to optimize productivity. This includes establishing customer service platforms and payment gateways that are responsive. 
every worker needs to know what is required of them, with the worker and supervisor using verifiable established targets. You cannot improve if you're not measuring. You won't know what to, to, to do. And we'll just be all based on, on a gut, gut feeling. And um, so that's one of the things we want to encourage us, even as individuals, organizations, to, to have that um, culture or habit of measuring and measuring what matters. Right, and not just measuring everything, but measuring what matters and working to improve on those gaps that exist. The Labour and Social Security Ministry through the Jamaica Productivity Centre has started its very own modernization exercise through the institution of a digital records management system, moving a number of its services online as it upgrades its network and investing in new technologies to improve efficiency. Investing in research and development and facilitating the creative, scientific and technological expertise of Jamaicans will spur innovation and the creation of new products and services to transform industries to meet the demands of the fourth industrial revolution. For example, we have agriculture. Agriculture could be transformed to an high-level agricultural sector. And I'm thinking also with that, there can also be greater linkages between the goods producing and service producing sector. Enhancing productivity, quality and competitiveness through world-class individuals will require a culture of continuous training. We have to learn how to accept or create structures that allow innovation, allow change, to build a culture of continuous learning and improvement. Let us start with access to broadband. Broadband can give us that quantum leap forward in Jamaica tied with a digital literacy program for people of all ages, tied with schools that focus on continuous learning and continuous improvement. We need higher education and more focused training programs, upskilling the global services industry. So that's basically like the BPO. There's the possibility for individuals to use the internet and free education available online to advance productivity and for maximizing on remote working in this increasingly digital world. Working on your own individual digital literacy, being familiar with the tools that are out there, not just for consumption, but what the possibilities are. And there's so many resources online that you can find to do that. Coursera, Udemy, um, it, and these are their platforms in their own right. Um, another one too that's really good because I find that the things on Coursera and Udemy tend to maybe work best if you know you've already completed high school and university if you need to bring your math skills up to date you can use an assort a resource like khan academy increased education and training certification quality management and leadership rewards and incentives innovation having the right technology automation and tools and using those to full capacity are all key tenets of long-term productivity. Of course, all this doesn't necessarily mean working harder. Instead, it's all about working smarter. Tell the farmers thank you that we truly appreciate all they do they give tremendous service and they are in fact everyday heroes they get up and ensure that we have food on our table and were it not for a farmer we wouldn't be eating so oftentimes we may take it for granted but we want the farmers to know that we're the ministry of agriculture and fisheries that we do not take them for granted and we're here to support them so we will continue to roll out our activities to support our farmers during this month and the entire year they know that rather the AIC, the NIC, all the agencies of the ministry is there to support them. But my only message is really thank you for all you do. On the note of productivity, we are mindful you'll also need your health to create wealth. So in our HealthWise segment of the magazine, we'll be looking at the behavior of the Aedes aegypti mosquito which transmits disease such as dengue fever to humans. Here's what you can do to prevent the spread of these diseases and protect your health.
mosquitoes are undoubtedly annoying with their irritating sound and stinging bites. But there are more compelling reasons we'd rather not have them around. Several species are carriers of diseases and a threat to human health. Of most significance to Jamaica is the Aedes aegypti mosquito, known to transmit dengue fever, chikungunya, yellow fever, and the Zika virus. Only female mosquitoes bite, doing so to get the blood they need for egg production. And therefore, only female mosquitoes transmit these viruses. The Aedes aegypti mosquito is what we call a timid feeder. So she's easily disturbed when feeding. It means that in one night, she may feed on several persons before she takes her complete blood meal. Each time she feeds, she secretes that substance. And in the secretion of the substance, the pathogen is passed on. So in one night, one female Aedes aegypti mosquito is able to infect more than one person. The female Aedes aegypti mosquito is a prolific breeder. One female Aedes aegypti mosquito is able to lay up to 200 eggs each time she lays her eggs. So one mosquito can populate an entire area. The lifespan of the mosquito is around three weeks and the entire cycle from egg to adult can occur in as little as seven to eight days. Female mosquitoes are ready to mate within a few hours after reaching their adult stage, and males are usually ready within 24 hours. This mosquito prefers cleaner waters for the female mosquitoes. She will lay her eggs in water, and for the Aedes, it would be water which is in and around the household. So while there are a number of things we can and should do to prevent being bitten, the most effective way to prevent the spread of diseases by these mosquitoes is to prevent their breeding. The Aedes aegypti mosquito is a mosquito that breeds in a containerized environment. They do not breed in rivers and drains, but they breed in containers that can be found in and around where persons dwell. So come with us and let us show you some of those breeding sites. This is a typical disc drainer that we find in most homes. And under most disc drainer is a tray that collects the water that comes off the dishes. And believe it or not, we have found breeding in several homes in these disc drainers. Yes. You can see that we have water that has settled. If this water does not evaporate quickly, it can lend itself to the breeding of the Aedes aegypti mosquito. So you not only have to empty the disc drainer, but you have to scrub to remove those eggs. This is the typical saucer that we will find under a plant. The rain has recently fallen, it has collected water, and right now it is steaming with the Aedes aegypti mosquito. Do you have some of these in your home? Aedes aegypti prefers water that is a little bit on the cleaner side, and it's found in a shaded environment. So what should we do with something like this? It's quite simple. You need to throw away the water. And if these containers are not being used, you have to keep them turned down so they're not able to collect water. If you have them under your plants, we ask that you bore holes in them so that it will not collect water. Do you have these in your homes? We find these in a lot of hotels and business places. And we ask those persons, check these bird baths or any ornamental things like these you have in your garden to ensure that they are not breeding the Aedes aegypti mosquito. There are things like this thrown down in person's backyard. Old equipment, old furniture, old fixtures that are taken from homes, especially during construction. These are also able to hold water. And if they're holding water and sit for a while in the environment, they will also breed mosquitoes. And so we have found breeding in wheelbarrows, in old refrigerator, in old things such as this one. And we ask persons, if you're throwing out these, please ensure that they are positioned in such a way that they will not collect water. Many persons, when they do have their drums, most times they have missed, they don't, the drums do not have any covers. So there is a mesh cover which is so designed to replace the missing covers. It is lightweight and what we do is just simply slip it over and the mesh is so designed mosquitoes will not be able to go through this mesh to get to the water. So this is the ideal way. 
One of the benefits also of this mesh is that even when rain does fall, water will go right through it. This is a typical example where this we have is a plastic drum and we have a metal cover here which is not designed for this. Whilst in some practice the intent is good, there may be occasions in which it does not fit or sit properly and as a result you still have openings where mosquitoes can, can go right through and breathe. The mosquito is breeding right there in some very small places right around where you live. What is the habit we want you to develop? Once every week, search for and destroy the breeding sites of the Aedes aegypti mosquito. A proper diet, that is nutritious meals in the correct portions, is important to achieving and maintaining good health. And so food labeling, which gives us the information about what's in our food, is key to helping us achieve our health goals. Keep watching to learn more. Your body needs energy and we call this our daily requirements of calories. And for Jamaican men, it's about 2,100. For Jamaican women, it's about 1,900 calories per day. The calories are just a unit of energy to say how much energy you need to get around your daily activities and so on. If you're more active and you're, you're not in a desk job, then you're going to burn more calories. If you go to work, when you get up in the morning, you sit in a car and you go to work, you sit in, uh, at a desk all day, and then lunchtime come, you order and they deliver the food to you. And then you eat that and you go back and sit again. And then you sit in a, a bus or a car and you go home. So you're sitting all day. You're not doing much. Versus somebody who's on the road and they're walking around or they're standing all day like the teachers and nurses and so on. Then you'll realize the difference in how much energy you will need. And so if you are more active, you should be eating a little bit more. But the problem is that everybody is eating as if they're working in sugar cane fields, chopping cane all day. And this is the problem. So we consume more calories than we are burning off. And every day if we keep on consuming calories, you need 3,500 calories to make one pound of fat. One soda, if you look on the serving size for these things, these juices and so on, you'll think that, oh, it's just 110 calories. But how many servings come in that, that container? About three or two and a half. So you can easily drink 300 calories like that. And if you do that five times for the day, that's 1,500 calories. You almost don't need to eat anything else for the rest of the day. So the excess calories come in the body and then the body begins to store them as fat. And then you put on more weight and more weight. You have to watch the pastries and the breads and all of these things that people, even when they're vegetarian, they still have a lot of these little snacks and so on. These things are full of calories. You know that one, one of the, 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 the cream crackers is about 450 calories. Water crackers is about 500. Yeah, nobody don't want to hear. I never want to believe it either. But this is what you get, the, the, the big, the, the packs that you get. And a lot of people eat them with butter, right? So can you imagine how many calories you're putting in your body with one little snack? And you don't talk about the, the, the tea yet with the milk, the condensed milk and the sugar that you have to have that with. All of these things, they add up without you even knowing. The ingredients label will go from the most to the least in a product. So if, it's, if the product is making a claim, look at where that claim is if it is one, two, or three, because if it falls less than that, you're really not getting value for your money, right, in terms of content. The nutrition facts. One of the first things you're going to look at is the, um, 
the servants per container. And this says 2.5, which means it's two and a half servings in the container. You are not supposed to drink it, you must share it, right? And then you're going to look at your calories. It says 90 calories, but it's 90 calories per serving, and it's 2.5 servings. So it's 2.5 times 90, which comes out to about 225. And then you come down and you look at your sugar, and it's 22 grams of sugar, but it's per serving. So the entire container is 2.5 times 22, which works out about 55, 56, if my maths is right. And there's four grams equal one teaspoon. So you end up with about roughly 14 teaspoons of sugar. And that, that is, you use this template for all the products that have nutritional facts on them. This is 14 teaspoons of sugar. And the American Heart Association recommends that for an adult male, he con you're, you're supposed to consume nine teaspoons of added sugar per day. For an adult female, it is six teaspoons of added sugar per day. And for a child, it's less than six teaspoons per day. And a child here, we're talking about from two to 18 years old. Don't look at a container and judge it by the size alone. You have, it's very important to read the label so you know exactly. And look at it, 220 calories. For parents, we're, we're asking them you know, to be very mindful of how much sugar they're giving their kids, right? Because it impacts upon their health in the, not, in the long term. We try to provide information to parents and guardians, teachers, anyone about the alternatives to these sugary drinks because really you don't need them in your diet. You can get enough sugar that you need from your, the foods that you eat, the carbohydrates which are converted to sugars in your body which give you energy. So some of the alternatives are of course water. It's, um, it's the best one, but there's also fresh fruit juices. So blending your own juices without adding sugar and you'll have the natural sugars and fiber from the fruits. There's coconut water, it should be, um, you should actually drink this in moderation because it does have quite a, a high sugar content, um, but it is a good alternative. For the children, freezing the juices into popsicles or ice cubes so that it's more interesting for them to drink, as well as doing infused water. So infused water is... Um, it's a process where you cut up your favorite fruit or vegetable or even mint leaves or aloe. You place it in water overnight so that the, the vitamins, the minerals, all the goodness from the fruits and vegetables are infused into the water and you can have that. It's not sugar sweetened and it gives you the vitamins and minerals that you need throughout the day. And then for children, there's unsweetened milk. So not flavored milks like the chocolate milk, but unsweetened milk doesn't have a high sugar content and it also will give the children the calcium that they need for their growing bodies as well. This is where we end another wonderful journey through the pages of Jamaica Magazine. We value your company, so be sure to join us again tomorrow for another show. Until then, continue to watch these and other programs by logging on to our website, grs.gov.jm, or subscribing to our YouTube channel. You can also find us on all the major social media platforms and through our mobile app that's Android and iOS compatible. On behalf of the entire production team, I'm Adrian Atkinson, reminding you to follow the COVID-19 protocols and do stay safe. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.